And welcome to Up to the Minute. It is Thursday, April the 2nd. We are moving through this time right now. And uh, we're back. 10 a.m. show on live right now on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. We've got a very packed show, so we're going to get right to it today. Brittany Pacheco joining us uh, from a different location today. Welcome to the show again, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd. Yes, uh, I'm at a different location today at my parents' house, so it's good to be here. Good deal. And we're also joined by uh, Desmond Lewis, who is the Faculty Senate President for this year. Welcome to the show, Desmond. No, good morning. Welcome. Well, there we go. That was uh, actually, that's, that's my fault with the extra audio there. So I'm not going to blame anybody else. We've also got uh, Joe Ellen Saucier, who is the Executive Director of Financial Aid. Joe Ellen, welcome to the show. Good morning. Happy to be here. And we're going to start with Dr. Norma Perez, our Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Perez, boy, it is a busy time here at HCC. Our classes went online on Monday. We're in full swing right now. But we've got a few questions that folks have been asking. We're going to get to those in a moment. But can you talk about some of the virtual assistance that's available for students right now, like the Canvas Call Center and the Student Services Call Center? First of all, Todd, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, always happy to be here. Uh, we do have a lot of resources for our students. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have uh, several resources when it comes to our Canvas, which is our learning management system. And they can always access that information through our, uh, the student resources website that's found where we have all of the COVID uh, information. And so they can find anything they need to know in reference to any issues that they may be having on accessing Canvas. In addition to that, we also have the call center. And the call center to have well, someone actually, actually answer any questions for them. So we, we, have, we have live people at the call center that can answer questions if students have questions, and that's manned throughout normal business hours. Do you have the hours that they would be available? They're, they're manned uh, during, during our regular business hours, which is usually from uh, 7 in the morning uh, till about uh, 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, that number, again, is that, is that 713-718-5295. And, and that number will assist them whether it's a technical issue or whether it's an issue in terms of just trying to access uh, Canvas or maybe not being able to uh, complete an assignment, not knowing how to do the assignment uh, so that someone can walk them through that process. So one thing, um, Dr. Perez, we've been getting some social media questions and we wanted to get you a, to address at least a couple of those. Brittany, I know we've had some questions regarding refund policy. Um, can you pass those on to Dr. Perez? Because I know you've been monitoring this. Absolutely. Yes, uh, Dr. Perez, thank you for joining us and thank you for taking these questions. Um, one student asked, can I get reimbursed for lab fees since the rest of the semester is online and not in person? Well, uh, Brittany, at this point, we have not made any changes to our refund policy as it exists. Uh, however, there are still some ongoing conversations. So right now, I, I can't answer that other than the fact that we are uh, continuing with the current refund policy, which would not call for that. Uh, but again, uh, it's, uh, it's still under review, and we hope to have uh, some uh, uh, come to a conclusion by the end of this week. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Perez, I've got a question um, regarding uh, not necessarily refunds, but someone's asking if they drop off, drop a class because they don't have the capacity to do their classes online, can they use their payment to restart the class later? It sounds like a complicated question, but I'm sure uh, several of our students may have that question as well. Yes, we have received that question uh, several times, several versions of that question. And again, that is something that is being discussed because uh, uh, again, that would go back to our refund policy. And, and as I've indicated earlier, we have not made any decisions to make any changes to that. But there is some discussion as to how can we better serve our students uh, based, on, based on the situation that they now find themselves in. And Brittany, um, I know a lot of folks are having questions about the hands-on classes like welding. Do you have one for that? 
I do. And specifically about welding, Dr. Perez, um, I know we offer many skill labs here at HCC that are very hands-on. So how are the welding classes being done if, in fact, because they are hands, hands-on, how are, how are the welding classes being handled? Well, you know, in, in those are the courses that deal with our career and technical education side of the house, our workforce side of the house. And so in many of those courses, they have a lecture component to it as well as a hands-on component. It's been very easy to convert the lecture component to online. And so there is that portion that is being taught online. In some of our programs, we've been able to use some software that we've located to assist those students to continue to get some of that hands-on experience uh, virtually. And, and so when we can do that, we're doing that. Uh, for welding, I think they were, they were able to, to get some uh, hands-on via uh, online, but there's a portion that we still can't do. So we're working to see uh, how we can set up schedules to be able to do that uh, if and when we're allowed back into the facility. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Perez, I know you've, uh, you're very busy. In fact, I know you had to jump out of another meeting to join us this morning. We appreciate you being here. Um, before you go, do you have a message you'd like to get to our students? Because I know you're working tirelessly to make this uh, effort fruitful for them and to make this the best delivery of education available to them. I, absolutely. I just want to tell our students to, to, to please work with their faculty member you know, we, our faculty member have, have done a remarkable job in terms of trying to set up their online courses that would be helpful to our students. Uh, in many cases, they are conducting uh, live lectures so that students can actually see their professor and have conversations with them. I, I strongly encourage them to reach out to their faculty and discuss the situations that they're having because we really want to see them be successful. And, and we are we are going to be flexible and supportive in helping them move forward. So I encourage them uh, to give it a try. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that in some cases, they're going to find the experience to be very rewarding and, and want something that I think they will enjoy in terms of online uh, learning. Dr. Norma Perez, our Chief Academic Officer, thank you for joining us and uh, getting the word out to our students, faculty, and staff of things that are going on at HCC during these difficult times. Thank you very much this morning. Thank you. Well, we were talking about faculty just a few moments ago, and now we've got the Faculty Senate President joining us right now. Desmond Lewis, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. So Desmond, um, what are your impressions now that uh, we're in the online learning environments? Um, we've had a few days under our belt. Um, what is your compression? What is your impression about what, how's it going so far? It's going pretty well. You know, our faculty and I can't give them enough accolades. They're resilient. They've been able to pivot on a dime. Uh, they've adapted to the new environment. I won't lie and say it has not been without challenges, but there are supports. They're supporting one another. I have to say individuals such as Richard Goslin, Mia Taylor, and you have so many other faculty that have stepped to the forefront to embrace other individuals to assist them. The college itself and the administration has put things in place, uh, such as with Dr. Drain's faculty mentors, to ensure that we all have what we need to move forward. So at this point, you know, even though the change was so abrupt, uh, we, we are doing what we do best, teach. You know, that change was abrupt. It seems like we left for spring break. We haven't returned since. And going into spring break, there was that uncertainty. We were preparing for on, an online environment, but I imagine this, uh, it just grew so quickly. What's been the feedback you've received so far being uh, where we are right now? Well, right now, I, I, the feedback that I've received from faculty members, initially a lot of individuals were a bit uh, apprehensive if they've never done um, any canvas type of work but so far so good you know i've heard from many instructors who using both the synchronous and asynchronous model of instruction um, again i have to give tons of props to the chairs because many of them were working during spring break if not all of them to make sure that our faculty were in alignment so i've heard a lot in regard to uh, how students actually are um, embracing this because you have to remember many of the students are digital natives so for some of us who are not of that age group it may be a bit of a, um, 
it may be a bit jarring to get adjusted to that new environment, but students, for the most part, the younger students, I would say, uh, have acclimated pretty well. And the instructors, once they receive those tools, because you're talking about a group of some of the most learned individuals in the nation, they've been able to, again, do what they normally do. And they're probably their, their biggest critics also. I'll say that too. Sometimes we're really hard on ourselves. So the faculty are really trying to do um, as much as they can to support our students. But you have to remember this too, um, in regards to challenges. The same things the students go through, the faculty are too going through. You know, um, this situation is something that no one can foresee, but they're doing their best uh, to comfort students and to comfort one another. So I, I cannot say enough about the um, how great this faculty is and, and how great the job they are doing at this time. Some people may have been uh, looking at going to work for HCC prior to all this happening. Um, would do, would, are we still going through a hiring process for faculty? So I'll pass that over to Dr. Perez, but my knowledge, I believe that we are still in the process. Now things are fluid, it's a dynamic situation. Um, so I'm sure that um, changes will occur and uh, um, adaptations will take place. But I'll let Dr. Perez speak more to that if she'd like to at this point. Uh, uh, Todd, in reference to your question, yes, we are looking at posting the positions that we had uh, uh, intended to post at this point. Uh, but again, as, uh, as, uh, as Desmond Lewis uh, indicated, it, it depends on the situation. We're hoping to fill all of those positions. Uh, however, we, we, we need to continue to, to, to review how our enrollment uh, continues uh, through the summer. Very well, and I know it's, it's a fluid situation and, and we are all seeming to have, be, to have to be flexible. Um, has, has that come up with the faculty as well, Desmond? Um, it seems like the theme right now, whether you're a student, staff member, or faculty, you need to be flexible, flexible because things are changing day by day. Oh, yeah, I will say our faculty have become contortions. I mean, the flexibility that they're exercising is, is in parity of what the flexibility of the institution is doing. Again, being such a dynamic situation and things changing um, just in the social climate globally, um, the faculty, they're adapting, they're, they're holding strong, and their level of flexibility, again, you think about this. If you are teaching a face-to-face -face course, to take that course and drop that course into an online remote environment, uh, it takes a lot of malleability. So being able to adapt to this is something that we teach our students. So those critical thinking skills that we have all developed through our levels of education, as through our experience over the years, we've collectively coalesced um, in a manner that in a manner that, that uh, is reflective of what the college purports in regard to our ability to, to help society at large. So in short, yes, they're extremely flexible uh, without, and let me emphasize this, without uh, compromising rigor. You know, the, the idea is to make sure that we as faculty continue to do the top tier job that we can. So by no mistake should someone um, feel as though he or she will um, an instructor will truncate the level of um, rigor that they are putting into their courses. So that's something that we need to think about. You know, as we translate over to this remote work environment, we still need to educate our students to the exact same level as we did in the other modalities. And to ensure that faculty are working, and I can assure you of this, over time to make sure those students will be ready for the workforce of tomorrow and today. Desmond Lewis, we appreciate everything you do. I know you're a busy guy. We appreciate you joining us on the show, Faculty Senate President. And most importantly, please spread the word that we, we're very grateful for our faculty. We know they're working hard. We appreciate what they do. And we always look to give them a shout out here on Up to the Minute, because I know a lot of them watch the show. So we, uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you. I'm going to join now by Joelle Insaucier, uh, the Executive Director of HCC's Financial Aid Office. Joelle, and welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. You know, um, last week we learned that the foundation made a $50,000 donation to the Swoop to the Rescue Fund, which is for emergency aid for our students. 
Yesterday, during the board meeting, I saw some of the numbers and how the funds have been distributed. You guys are being, very, you've been very busy with this, and it looks like the funding is getting out there to the students already, and there's a need for it. That's correct. Matter of fact, um, we changed a lot of our processes where we're, we're literally awarding by the minute and we're dispersing every day, um, as well as refunding to students on a daily basis. And we're probably going to do that for a while. So we're, we're obviously living in a different world right now. Things have dramatically changed since we left for spring break. And this morning, the unemployment numbers were released and they were expecting about 3.1 million new unemployed new uh, claims. We're now up to 6.6 .6 million that have been. It's more than doubled what the anticipation. I can only imagine this is gonna affect a lot of our students who are working part time, going to school, and there's gonna be more of a need for help out there. That is correct. As a matter of fact, um, Congress passed a law uh, a few years back that allows us to take unemployment benefits into consideration and we can adjust their financial aid application based on that information. So as, as our students and families start receiving the unemployment approvals, they need to let us know. Uh, we have a form online, it's called the Special Circumstance Form. They'll need to complete that online form and attach a copy of their unemployment approval. From that information, we will be able to make adjustments to their financial aid application, which could allow them to be eligible for, for more uh, grant funds. I know I want to rest everyone assured that you guys are all working completely online like the rest of us, still answering the financial aid needs for students. And sooner or later, we're going to be, re we're going to be registering for the next semester and for the fall, and people are going to need financial aid. So are those dates, as far as filing for FAFSA, are those still in place right now? Absolutely, we are processing full speed ahead. Uh, we've already started uh, awarding for summer. Uh, we are getting ready to send out um, communications to students about uh, summer funding, summer, getting summer books, because those will become 100% uh, online ordering. Uh, we are going to continue processing our emergency application forms. Uh, those are available to students. Uh, we've already awarded over $300,000 to students in emergency funding for um, living expenses, such as uh, housing, food, utilities. Uh, we're gonna continue processing those. We're getting a few hundred a day, and I've added um, more people onto that project. So we had six people. Now we have about 18 people assigned to processing emergency applications so we can get them, get them done quicker and get the funding out to students faster. And I think you brought up a good point because the student may be thinking, well, I'm not, uh, I don't need help buying books, but there's a need for an emergency. But this aid is available to our students who are facing financial barriers, not just for school related materials and classes, right. correct? That is correct. Yep. We can um, help them with any type of basic living need expenses. And those basic living needs, I would imagine, could range from the funds um, if they are a need to uh, stock their pantry, um, buy food, or, and you mentioned housing as well. So you guys are issuing funds to supplement them to try to uh, alleviate these cost problems? That is correct. Yep. And these are grant funds. These are funds that students do not have to pay back. That's an important point. So you're not, uh, this isn't being placed into your, your financial loan package to where you have to pay this back. These are funds that are granted to you. That's correct. If someone needs to find out more information, they're thinking, you know what, I need some help right now. I'm a student, or maybe they're a faculty member, because I know our faculty are very good at pointing our students into where to find this aid. Where can they go on the website and how can they find the application? How long does it take? If you could go through that with us. Um, so it's really on the front page of our website. When they click on paying for college, they will see a link to our emergency aid program. So it's easy to find. It brings them right to the application. They fill out the application, attach documentation as to what they need the funding for and why they need it. Uh, that can be the fact that they are now unemployed or they are, they are furloughed at the moment from their uh, job or they just need help with um, the basic living needs. They can show that they need help with paying their rent uh, or whatever it might be. So we are uh, processing them very quickly. Um, and what we're going to do is continue to add more funding into that program. So we just put um, 
half a million dollars into that program uh, at the beginning of the week. Um, and then as those funds start to deplete, we will uh, be moving other funds into that program. $300,000 is a large amount, and we've been able to get that out there to our students, process that amount. I know your work is, is endless with this because it's, do you know uh, any numbers or any idea how much your, your increase for uh, demand for help has, has uh, been over the past couple of weeks? Can you say it's increased 20%, 30%, 100% or more? Uh, it's increased about 400%. 400%. That's correct. Demand. Wow. That's amazing. And just to give some folks some history on this, you guys started this following Harvey, is that correct? Actually, we started this due to Harvey. So we, we were developing an emergency aid program prior to Harvey, and Harvey pretty much kicked it off. Uh, so uh, we got to, we gave out a lot of hundreds of thousands of dollars due to Harvey, and then we continued the program after Harvey to continue to help um, students with emergency needs. Uh, so this program has been in place for a couple of years now. Uh, it's just becoming more and more important based on the current uh, crisis in this country. So once again, students and, and faculty, if you, you know of someone who needs this type of assistance, uh, one of our students, please direct them to our homepage. They can find it by uh, clicking on the financial aid and then going to emergency help. Joelle and Saucier, we appreciate you being here. I know you guys are busy. And uh, like the rest of us here at HCC, our financial aid department is online and you guys are ready to help. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, let's uh, go to Brittany. Brittany, I know you've been watching our uh, social media questions. You know, I saw something pretty cool yesterday, and maybe, I don't know if you've seen this hashtag pop up out there, but um, uh, Janet May, our uh, chief uh, uh, talent, our chief uh, human resources officer, posted hashtag, we got this HCC. Have you seen that? You know what? I actually have not, and I'm kind of sad to say that. No. Um, I no, this is the first time hearing about it. Yeah, so we, I think we need to start adding that because I thought it was really cool. And, and Janet was the first one I saw that posted it. So we got to give her a shout out for getting it out there. But hashtag, we got this HCC. So I think, you know, as we're, as we're posting stuff in social media, and I know you handle a lot of that, and our social media team does as well. Um, let's start using that hashtag. I know we, we use a uh, hashtag we are HCC and also hashtag HCC proud. But I think during this COVID crisis, we need to realize that we got this. We're going to get through this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely, you know, social media is a blessing and a curse because, of this, you know, we, you know, crave information. But at the same time, are we getting a little bit too much information? So definitely using hashtags helps us um, see the positivity in things, especially if we have uh, messages like this, we've got this HCC because we do, you know, we're working through it. We're working together, as you can see by our guests who represent different departments here at HCC and it's going to be okay. And it's one quote that I like to share that I live by, everything will be okay in the end. If everything's not okay, it's not the end. Um, but I actually do have a question. Yeah, I love that quote. I've seen you post that before too. Definitely. Um, and I do have a question for Joellen, um, if you don't mind taking a moment. Um, you did discuss um, about the emergency funds that are available to HCC students. And one question that we've been receiving a lot on our social media platforms are from our international students. And they want to know, do they qualify uh, for these emergency funds? Yes, they do. They, they can fill out the application. We have been uh, providing some funding to our international students. I do know that as of yesterday, we had given um, funding for technology needs to uh, over 50 international students um, as of yesterday. Uh, we are opening up our SWOOP emergency fund to international students, so they can go ahead and apply for that also. That's fantastic. And I think it's great that, you know, we're here to um, help all of our students in this HCC community, and um, I, I know that they'll appreciate that. So we'll be sure to make a post and let our international students know that they too very much can apply for these emergency funds. That's right. Brittany, you know, you've been monitoring uh, social media over the past several days, and we touched on a few questions, but there was one question I wanted you to um, uh, maybe comment on. Um, do, 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 worry, let's see. Um, and maybe it, this might be something that Desmond may want to comment on. 
Um, it goes in the direction of saying, are the professors all offering online lectures and help for the students currently enrolled? And then the, the, the posting goes on in a few different directions. But at the end, it says, Desmond, you comment on this. It says students are not expected to self-teach, correct? And I think you addressed this with, with what you were talking about, Desmond. Right, right, right. No, students are definitely not supposed to self-teach. When you talk about synchronous and asynchronous, um, instruction. We have resources on um, Canvas such as Zoom, uh, WebEx, what we're using now, and many other resources to actually provide lectures to students face-to-face. Uh, -face. In the classroom setting, um, instructors have many other methods besides just lecturing uh, with their students. You have to do various types of assessments. These incremental assessments are how we tear up to our test at the end where the students get their final grades. So, as we embed these in our different designs on our Canvas pages, they follow the same metrics. So many of the instructors that I've spoken with, they've used the a lot of lecturing sessions and they record them. So that gives students actually a, a different level of access to the instructor afterwards and immediately afterwards to watch that lecture over and over again. In addition, faculty have virtual office hours that allow for students to reach out. And as those students reach out who need one-on-one -on -one instruction, they're there. Uh, now, one of the things that I know um, that some faculty have, have mentioned to me is that they question about access to buildings uh, to see to retrieve materials. Well, at this time, you know, we can't do that. And I also let uh, Dr. Perez chime in on that a bit. And it's obvious due to health concerns. So at this time, there's no um, plans in the immediate future to allow for access to buildings to grab those materials. However, through our department chairs, our deans, and fellow faculty members, including those faculty mentors, we've been able to amass, we as in each and every division and department, our resources by which to continue to give our students that top tier education. So I want to reiterate, none of the level of rigor, none of the level of quality is being compromised faculty are doing what they normally do to the same extent. So to answer that question in short, no, students are not uh, supposed to teach themselves. We as faculty are there to support them in the same way that we would have in a face-to-face -face or hybrid or any other uh, modality. Desmond, we appreciate that, uh, that answer there and you summed it up very uh, succinctly. I want to uh, bring the uh, Dr. Norma Perez, and, and I'm glad you brought up that question about people getting back in the buildings because I get asked that on a daily basis by some of our staff members at HCC TV. Obviously, there's technical equipment they would like to retrieve, but Dr. Perez, right now, that's just not a safe situation and it's not being allowed, correct? That is correct, Todd. Uh, until we can get uh, a clearance for right now, all of our campuses are closed uh, to all of our faculty, staff, and students. Uh, we are trying to make uh, in, in, uh, uh, make uh, the the needs met uh, by the method that that Desmond has indicated to you in reference to needs that faculty may have. It's uh, sharing with among each other. There's been a lot of collaboration among our faculty, uh, and but in addition to that, keep in mind that we also have a great deal of open educational resources. So when needed, faculty are also resorting to to looking to see what else they can can uh, provide. One of the important things that when we initiated the online transition that we emphasized to our faculty was the fact that we wanted to continue to maintain instructional quality and rigor. And that's been the intent from the beginning to ensure that we cover all of the student learning outcomes that are required for the course to ensure that our students are ready for the next course that follows after completion of this semester. Dr. Perez, Chief Academic Officer and the Vice Chancellor of Instructional Services, thank you for being here again this morning. And Desmond Lewis, Faculty Senate President, thank you for being here. And also Joellen Saucier, Executive Director of HCC's Financial Aid Office. I know you're all working very hard for our students, faculty, and staff, and we appreciate your efforts. And Brittany, thanks for joining us this morning. You're going to try to come back this afternoon? Or you able to make Unfortunately, I'm not available this afternoon, but uh, I just wanted to put you on the spot. I know it. you, you know, that's just how it is. But nope, you yeah. guys are doing great in the afternoons without me. So keep on doing what you're doing.
We do have an afternoon show at 1 p.m. today. I've got a very special guest. We're going to be talking about the television news world and how they're covering stories these days. You may have turned on your TV set and you see the anchors are anchoring from home. The reporters are doing their live shots from their couch. We're going to talk all about that with the president and general manager of ABC 13 KTRK, Wendy Granado. She'll be joining me for the full half hour at 1 p.m. today, Central Standard Time, right back here on Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis with Brittany Pacheco. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Todd. Thank you.